I've been back home in the United States since February 1st of 2017. So as this video was being recorded, ladies and gentlemen, this will be a very dated video. But today, guys, I want to share with you the four things that I've learned since being a part of the rat race, a.k.a. the Matrix here in the United States. And I want to tell you a little bit about what it has taught me. So please allow me to be a little bit candid with you guys. Please allow me to be honest in some of my perceptions about what I've learned since being back in the United States and being a part of the grind for the last four years. Okay, without further ado, man, what is good? What is good? What is good? Of course, you know who I be, the good doc, Dr. Mike TV. Back again, once again. You already know what it is, man. First time to this channel, guys. Make sure you subscribe, notify, do all the good things to make yourself well-versed in the good guys content. All of my good stuff shall be listed in the link in the description area below. Before I left the United States, guys, and moved to the Philippines officially, I was only 17 years of age. At that time, I worked at Hardee's, a.k.a. for all of my people on the West Coast, you guys call it Carl Jr.'s, right? So that was the job that I had when I left the United States, 17 years of age. <sighs> what a time difference things can make when living abroad, man. What a difference it makes when you move abroad, okay? So that was what I did, man. As you guys know, fast forward, man, I spent 10 years in the country, bam, back in the matrix, February 1st, 2017. And I want to share with you guys the four things that I've learned, man, since being a part of the rat race for real, basically as an adult, because I wouldn't consider myself part of that race when I was younger, because I got to keep all of my money. You feel me? So number one, the first thing that it's taught me and not in any particular order, it taught me how to invest because you are only as good to your employer as the work that you put in. I don't care if you make your employer $100,000, you F up one time all of a sudden, that negativity is stuck on you forever. So with that being said, being back in a rat race has taught me about investing, taught me about focusing on passive income, finding ways to earn money without having to work for it, because I'd be damned if I find myself in a job that I can't stand, dealing with bosses I don't like, and having to stick it out with that job because... I don't have any money. Now, I know a lot of guys would be like, yo, man, you want to get your money up. You want to get your work up, man. You got to go out there and be an entrepreneur. You got to go out there and do it on your own. And with me having a business background, that would be ideal. And again, a lot of the work that you can do, we'll talk about a little bit later, um, online work and things like that. But ideally, not everybody is business savvy, business minded. Not everybody has the determination and passion that it takes to earn a business. So a lot of us, myself included, because I currently work for an employer, have opted to, you know, work a nine to five, make it happen, get our times off on the weekend. I understand that owning your own business is extremely beneficial. You do not need to tell me that. But I have also learned that the money that you make while you're currently working, you definitely have to put it in positions to earn you money passively. All right. I don't need to go into what you can do to earn passive income, stocks, uh, even cryptocurrencies coming up in um, a lot of topics of conversation, real estate, if you got it like that. So many different ways you can earn passive income. But ideally, what I've learned, the first thing that I've learned is, you know, these jobs ain't going to be around forever for us. Shoot, we may be replaced by robots <laughs> sometime, who knows? But it's best for us to get our passive income together. That way, our money will work for us rather than us having to work for it. And if you don't have that mindset right now, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a tough one for you in the years to come. You don't want to be 65 looking at your bank account, realizing that you only have at least two years worth of savings. So after that savings is up, you got to go out there and be a Walmart greeter or some shit like that. You don't want to be no Walmart greeter at 65 or 67 unless you want to. You don't want to be there because you have to be. You understand? So that's the first thing it taught me. You're only as good to your employer as the work that you put in. The minute you F up, everything that you've done seems to be wiped away. So you need to focus on finding other streams of income to get your life together and not having to worry about anything like that. All right. Number two. Although I complain a lot about being employed and all of that shit, or you may have those issues and complaining about your employer, I still personally believe, and this is my number two, that America is still the greatest place to earn some money. Earlier, I alluded to online businesses and stuff. You have a lot of people who are choosing to do online work. 
but ideally these people are getting paid in US dollars or working for US companies or doing online freelance work where they're getting paid in US dollars. So even if you don't necessarily like it, the United States is, or like being in the United States, the United States and that US dollar is still ideally the most iconic and most noteworthy currency to earn if you possibly can, whether that be remote or in person. And there's very few things I can say about that because that pretty much speaks for itself. But I've learned that the United States is still the greatest place to go out there and get that money. Again, I may be leaning more towards going to the Middle East. But again, that's probably something you physically have to be there for. Not necessarily something that you could do remotely. Okay. You know, it just depends on the company that you're working for, of course. But ideally, you know, we'll see how that plays out in there but i still believe that in my heart of hearts even being a part of the rat race in the matrix the united states is still one of the greatest places on earth to get that bread all right that's why you have so many filipinos trying to come to the united states right now because they know that this is one of the greatest places to earn money right and i can't complain man ever since i've been back i've been able to file taxes and guess what i've been able to get stimulus checks had i stayed in the philippines i would not have been able to apply and or get any stimulus money when they were handing those checks out so although i may complain there have been some bright moments wherein the u.s has come through clutch and again although i hate being a part of the rat race hate being a part of the matrix this is still one of the greatest places on earth to get that money aka to get that bread that feta in the philippines that feta is still one of the greatest places to work in order to earn you know significant cash flow in my opinion all right now sliding on to number three although we're making money although you may hate your employer one thing that i noticed about being in the rat race guys is nobody really cares to hear about your struggle this is pretty much common knowledge but nobody really cares to hear about your struggle and if you do happen to want to vent every now and again about how much you hate your job you know your life ain't really working out as much or as hope Oh, your life isn't really going as you hoped it would. Maybe you're a little behind on some things. You got some shit to pay for, some unforeseen expenses. It always seems that somebody has a sadder story than yours. And they want to hear you. They want to they want you to hear them out whenever they share their story. As in, you can be like, man, god dang, they repossessed my car today. Oh, they repossessed your car today? Well, damn, I got kicked out of my house. I got this, that. You know, it always seems like somebody has a a sadder story than yours or a story that represents harder struggles than your own. And they definitely want you to hear that. That way you feel as though you don't have a reason to complain, even though, you know, you're going through it like everybody else does. One thing that I learned about the rat race, man, there's always somebody out there in the world with a sadder story. So it's just better to A, keep it to yourself and B, somewhat it teaches you to be appreciative of your situation appreciative of the challenge and the struggle because we know that it's going to make us stronger it should make us stronger we shouldn't give up because something just isn't going right you know we shouldn't give up if things are not going right i feel as though we do get to a point in our lives where <laughs> when that shit starts to compound it becomes too much you're working hard you don't feel appreciated, you know, bills are stacking up, things are happening in your personal life. It seems to be a lot of things happening at one time. But during the struggle, during the matrix, during the rat race, I've learned that, you know, you can fold or you can hold. Basically, you can fold under the pressure or you can hold it down, keep it pushing and keep it moving. In my personal opinion, that's what separates the weak from the strong. And ideally, if you allow it to cripple you, you're proving everybody right that, you know, if something, if somebody come out and says something about you, and all of a sudden, you're just proving them right. So, ideally, I do understand that everybody goes through a struggle, but you should keep your struggles and all that shit to yourself unless you really have somebody you can talk to about it. Because for some got off a reason, nobody wants to hear your shit. Because all they're going to do is come out with a sadder story than yours. And then you're like, well, damn, man, maybe I shouldn't be complaining. You know, that's the third thing that I can honestly say about my work experience in the last four years being a part of the rat race here in the United States. And number four, number four, I have to really, really hone in on because I really want you to hear me when I say this. So I don't care what you're doing. Make sure you drop it. Listen in. The fourth thing that these last four years of being a part of the rat race has taught me is just how much I miss living abroad, how much I miss my life abroad. 
I miss it. Things are a lot simpler overseas. Things are a lot simpler abroad. This shit sucks. I love making the money, but I miss my lifestyle overseas. I know that the money that I'm making now is going to set me up for a better version of the lifestyle that I had when I was um, abroad four years ago. I know this. I feel this, but I miss my life abroad. And I've learned that a lot of foreigners, whenever they do spend a significant amount of time in whatever country they choose to navigate around and live in and or vacation in for a significant period, significant period of time, when they do find themselves back into the rat race or they do find themselves back home, they tend to miss the lifestyle that came with being in that particular country. And as a result, it can also make or break you. Because I want to be as honest and candid when I say this. When I came back home, man, y'all know I cried, man. I was like, yo, I don't want to be here. I don't recognize anybody around here. I don't recognize the landscape. This shit right here is not what I grew up knowing. Like I said, 10 years in the country will change your perspective on everything I've told you about that. But although I wanted to have a moment and just cry and all that shit. I had to realize why I was back here. I had to realize exactly the reason why I am officially officially back in the rat race and officially on U.S. soil making it work. I got to get this bread, man. I've got to get this money. It goes back to number two, of course, but you have to understand the reasons why you are here and why you are put on this earth and why you are where you are in the moment in which you are. If you ever want anything to work out for you, if you want it all to happen the way that you want it to happen, you got to be willing to sacrifice when sacrifice is necessary. Granted, I miss my life abroad. My life abroad wasn't making me money. My life abroad wasn't bringing in the necessary funds for me to diversify my portfolio. Now, if I do go abroad and I do find myself doing some work that allows me to work remotely Anywhere in the world that I want to, that's a completely different topic for a completely different time. But ideally, the work that I'm doing now requires me to show up to a workplace and for me to get it in and do what I got to do. And I'm perfectly okay with that. Again, this is the necessary sacrifice that must be made in order for me to achieve my final goals in life. In order for me to get to that moment where I can uh, achieve the FI and fire the financial independence because retiring retiring early just doesn't seem like my steez like retiring to me sounds a lot like just not doing anything else with the rest of my life no I always got to keep busy <sighs> but although I miss the lifestyle like I said guys this here is there's there's a reason why I am where I am and I think you guys feel it too If you are back in the United States and you're on the grind and you're putting in that work, you know exactly why you're here and you know exactly why you're doing it. You know where you see yourself in the years to come. And that's the reason why you continue to gut it out, right? Because I don't believe in leaving a lot of money on the table. I'm still relatively young. I have, in my opinion, a great amount, at least two decades or more of work in me if I choose to do so although I told myself I wanted to be financially independent and all that good jazz in the next 10 technically kind of semi-retired in the next 10 that gives me time to work that puts me in a position where I can personally choose what I want to do with the next stage of my life You can still make those same decisions when you're 60 or at the age of retirement, which for me would be another 30 plus. But if you can make those decisions earlier on and still relatively have that youth behind you, I feel like putting it in your mind, what financial freedom means to you and where you want to take it and what you want to do with it. I feel like if you put that in your mind early enough on, you can probably kill it in the next 10 But again, you have to be diligent. You have to be religious in the way that you set up your your allocation of money and the allocation of funds. Things got to get paid off, got to pay them off. And once you reach the pinnacle of what you thought you could never reach, and once you see the amount of money you've accumulated, whether it be through investments and things like that, or however you choose to get your money, 
then all of a sudden you can start to put in put the mo put the plan in motion to see what you want to do with the rest of your life. Maybe in the next 10 years, although I may want to be retired, maybe I see myself trying to get into something else. Maybe I'm not officially going to say, you know what, I'm going to step away and be done. Maybe I can see myself dropping another five years, or maybe I can see myself doing the full 20, however long I want to put in this work, or maybe dropping a full, another 30 years in a game. Either way, I'm here, man. Either way, I got to be ready for it. And either way, Although the Matrix, the rat race, and the grind doesn't always seem to be the most appealing to the majority of us, I'm in it. Knee deep in this shit. And I'm willing to continue to do whatever I need to do to put myself and the people that I love around me in a better financial situation. I laugh about it. I joke about it all the time. I used to tell y'all guys cryptocurrency is going to retire me. I say that enough to where I actually believe it now. And I do believe it still. But... Until that time comes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to continue to do what I do best. Put in that work, create my passive income streams, and for the life of me, try to change something to get out of the negative aspect of me always referring to it as the rat race and the matrix and stuff. Because I've always come to the conclusion that everybody who says it like that is viewing it in a negative light. And for me... It's not as negative as people make it out to be. It's not that bad. Granted, what I mentioned to you guys earlier, the four points, some of that shit was just, ah, it's enough to make you want to just say, yeah, I recognize people like that. But also, you got to understand, there is a good side to it. What is the good side to it? The fact that you can actually put in the work to make changes in your own personal life. And I think that that's a beautiful thing. And although I hate the Matrix, although I hate the term Matrix or Rat Race because it seems like it's monotonous, it's continuous, and there's no changing in it, or we find ourselves always in a position where we're working just to pay off bills, or basically people are just giving us enough money so that we report to the job the next day. They never want to pay us more than what, we, what we're worth and the value that we actually bring to whatever company we work for. I believe that to be true. I believe we got to do what's best for us grin and bear it for as long as we need to before we can put ourselves in positions to make the necessary changes. That's all I want to talk about today, man. I appreciate you guys liking it. appreciate you guys listening to it as long as you did. If you if you love the video, man, drop a like on it. Make sure you subscribe, notify, do all the good things to make yourself well-versed in the Good Docs content. If you enjoyed it enough that you want to support the Good Doc, there's a little heart that says thank you in the corner. Drop a couple of dollars on the Good Docs books. I'd highly appreciate that. All right? That'll be $2 more to get me out of this rat race shit. <laughs> and it would highly be appreciated. A little $2. All right, guys, man. That is my time. It has been fun. It has been real. But it's time for me to go and get the get. -in. So with that being said, good doc is officially out. At least knuckle. But I love him, which means I am going now. Uh, bye bye As always, love you guys. Makita. Mabuhai. Peace.